episode five. Hi there, and welcome to episode five of the Super Genius Podcast. I'm Mr. Oliver. I'm your host. You can contact me at Oliver Euro on the Twitter uh, or email me at BullardOliver at gmail.com. Today, a new unit. Talking about the Reformation now. Now, everybody wants to talk about Ulrich Zwingli. So we're going to do it. I'm a crowd pleaser. Ulrich Zwingli, born and lived in Switzerland. Finally, Switzerland getting some play in this class. We've ignored them completely. And frankly, we pretty much will for the rest of the year. Uh, He grew up, he's a humanist. We know about that. The people who study Greek and Latin authors. Huge fan of Deciderus Erasmus. Why wouldn't he be? Uh, Just because of the name alone. Um, he was a priest. Uh, he'd spent some time with Swiss mercenaries, the guy they, guys they pay to fight. Uh, he was their chaplain. He was the religious authority that traveled with them and tried to keep them on track. But he didn't really like that because soldiering and immorality go hand in hand, especially back in the day. Uh, you have all kinds of people doing all kinds of bad things. And so he says, look, you know, I'm just not into this. So when he gets back to Switzerland, he's like, all right, look, um, I understand the need for war, but I'm starting to resent the fact that the Catholic Church is paying Swiss soldiers to fight their wars um, for them. And he's talking about uh, these different wars going on, local things going on, um, not really the religious wars just yet, per se. Um, It's stuff in Italy and whatnot. Um, he uh, is not a perfect man. Ulrich isn't. Uh, he got a lady pregnant in 1519. And then he totally insults her. And this is not like gentlemanly behavior. He says, Alas, I fell and became like the dog who turned back to his own vomit. He's saying that he's comparing this poor girl and getting her pregnant to a dog eating vomit. And that's not cool. And then he goes on and he says, well, she was a barber's daughter, because apparently back in the day, barbers were not well-respected professions, and uh, possibly because they were also surgeons. More on that in a couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, the barber daughter seduced him, which is it's probably nonsense, but all right. Um, after that, he seems to kind of have, uh, he almost dies of a plague, Um, I don't know if it's the Black Plague per se, but he lives. And he starts teaching the Bible to the people in his town, in Zurich is the name of the town he's in, um, from A to Z. Now you say, which one is the Bible that starts with A? Is that the Book of Adam? No, first of all, there is no Book of Adam, but um, he means the New Testament. And he's going to start from the beginning of the New Testament, which is Matthew, um, all the way up to Z, which would be the last book, Revelation. It's not literally A to Z. Um, he becomes super, super reformy at this point. He really starts challenging the Catholic Church. He becomes an acquaintance with Martin Luther. Then he becomes friends. He wants to be like besties. But Luther and him get into it regarding uh, whether or not communion or the Eucharist is actually actually has the real presence of Christ in it or not. This is a whole thing that, frankly, I don't even want to get into because like, people fought wars over this stuff back in the day. But basically, they disagreed with what the communion symbolized exactly. Seems like a minor thing to me, but they got really upset. And then Luther says to him, Look, Ulrich, which is an awesome name, Ulrich, your spirit is different than mine. Your spirit is different than ours. So poor, poor Ulrich, he doesn't get to be friends with, with Marty Luther. That's, that's a shame. 
Um, the Catholic Church wants uh, Swiss, the Switzerland, uh, the Switzerland, Switzerland, to be more Catholic. Um, there is another movement going on at the time. Uh, John Calvin uh, is becoming very uh, dominant in the area as far as religion goes, and they say, "Oh, hey, um, we want you to be super Catholic again." And then they say, "We're going to use force." And then they suddenly reverse that, and they're like, "The Catholic Church is like, oh, let's make peace instead." And Zwingli's like, "I don't trust you guys." And sure enough, in 1531, Catholics invade. Zwingli goes with the army again, serving as chaplain again, trying to serve their religious needs, and he gets killed. Uh, but before they kill him, they find him wounded under a body, and they say, "You need to repent." Which I think is kind of nice that they they asked him if they recognized him. They're like, "Hey, you know, you are a Protestant, and uh, we want you to be Catholic. So we're going to give you a last chance." He says, "No, YOLO." He doesn't really say YOLO, but he says, uh, "You can kill my body, but not my soul." So then they kill his body. Um, that's kind of YOLO, right? And the next day they celebrate uh, killing this major Protestant priest by quartering his body he was already dead mind you but they put his body to tie it to four different horses and send them all in four different directions and then they burn the body which they was it was already dead and they burn the body and then they um, mix the ashes with the ashes of a pig which is pretty hardcore if you really get into it I mean that's intensity so that's the life of Ulrich Zwingli why do we care because Ulrich Zwingli uh, is an important figure in the Swiss Reformation. He's an important figure as far as um, teaching the scripture rather than just simply the teachings of the Catholic Church. He wants to go uh, sola scriptura, which I'm sure I just butchered, but basically scripture alone. And um, he's pretty awesome. He's a good guy to know for the AP test, often shows up uh, in some form or another. And if he doesn't, you're writing an essay, YOLO. Put it in there. Okay, only if it's about the Reformation, especially about, like, the North. But, you know, name drop him. It's not a bad idea at all. Let people know you know who he is because he's great. Good guy. So, you have a nice day. That's the end of this episode. I had no choice. I needed a way to keep them from killing me, Bruce. You just made a serious mistake. Not as serious as you, I'm afraid. Bane. Let us not stand on ceremony, Mr. Wayne. <coughs> Ooh, you think darkness is your ally. But you barely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man, and by then it was nothing to me but blind.